On this episode, I answer how to book market. We talked about elementary school students and wuzzles? Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, and this is episode 113 of the Ask Gary V Show. Super pumped up, nice day. Been, you know, was in Cannes, France, uh, so, con, can. Uh, so, uh, didn't get to do as many shows as I wanted to at the end of the last week. Been missing a lot of you. Uh, the best of Ask Gary V Show. I just watched the first couple minutes of the edit, uh, so I'm super excited about that. We'll be releasing that shortly. I'm around this week, so uh, we'll have a good amount of shows. I'm even trying to sneak one in tomorrow. I know Wednesday we're firm, Thursday we're firm? Friday we firm? No, so today, Wednesday, Thursday, so three. Definite this week, I'm just gonna try to sneak in a fourth one. What am I doing Friday? It's 4th of July weekend, right, very good point. Uh, And I'm going to a wedding, so I'll be disappearing. Um, Cool, Uh, and uh, yeah, (laughs) India. (laughs) Let's get into the show. By the way, real quick, real quick. um, I really like that little uh, message your dad sent you about me ripping your ear. Big ups, pops. Sorry about that, dad. Yeah. How's your ear? It's totally fine. Totally. Yeah. Okay, I'm ready. I'm really, I'm, I'm super ready for this show, guys. I'm really fired up, I'm really pumped. I love this show, I love all of you. Ronnie asks, if you had the opportunity to speak in front of an auditorium full of elementary schoolers, what would be your topic of choice and why? My topic of choice, so first of all, if I was in a room full of elementary school students like I was once ever in my career, which was in Houston in a tremendous conference that I went to where it was the best students from elementary school of all of Houston, uh, and I cursed up a storm, um, and I talked about like all sorts of crap. I remember I tried to connect with them, so I was using like, like random hip hop artists that were popping at the time. Um, and the teachers were literally flabbergasted and completely pissed off, and the kids were completely pumped. Uh, and like, like these were like the greatest students of like seventh and eighth grade in all of Houston, and like a third of the class quit school in seventh grade when I was done with the talk. Because what I really talked to them about was real life, which is look, you're a great student, Student, you're going down a certain path right now. Bad news, education in America is screwing you over. You're gonna pop out and you're gonna realize, holy crap, I don't wanna do this or this and that. And then I talked about the virtues of good schooling, which is the, the randomness of having a college roommate that's a billionaire and some of the other random stuff. Um, but, you know, it was a tremendous talk. My, cho- my choice of topic today, if I was to do it today, uh, would be, um, you know, I, I would tell them to, uh, to really recognize how to build self-esteem and self-awareness. I would pound that and I would say, look, you're looking at me and I'm an old dude up here and I'm cliche just like all your other teachers and parents, but um, you need to find the things that you're good at and really find the friends that you're looking for and you know, you hear it a million times that you're not gonna look back and care about the dumb shit that you care about now, but you don't believe me, but that's not gonna stop me from trying to pound it down your little throat. Oh, these are all the Instagram yeah. questions. You got a lot of questions from there, right? Yeah. So we can do a couple episodes worth. Cool. Um, that was fun. Follow me on Instagram. But this whole notion of like, where's the time? I think that people oh. like to claim that they work hard and smart, but they're not putting in the work. Your hustle, your work ethic, your drive is not predicated on your zip code. Right hook. That's a hashtag, D-Rock. <laughs> Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Um, my question is: It possible to have two burning passions and pursue? You know, it was on Jimmy Fallon once, right? I'm here with the one and only wine guru Gary Vaynerchuk, whose daily webcast, The Thunder Show, on WineLibrary.com, attracts over 90,000 viewers a day. Very impressive, buddy. Appreciate it. Uh, and you do, you're a wine guru. What makes you a wine guru? Can you explain it a little bit? Self-proclaimed, you know, just take the title. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a very silly mood today. It's a Monday. Yeah, I love Monday. 
So it's early Monday morning and I've been wanting to make a Monday morning video for a long time and finally DRock we're doing it. So real quick, this is just a rant, very simple and something that I want you to pass on or watch every Monday morning because the level of complaining is unacceptable. Look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lots of editing. This is not going to We're taping this so early and it's going to come out so late. <laughs> Pixel Art asks is it possible to have two burning passions and pursue them at the same time without half-assing them? Or is it ideal to pick one at a time? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, I, you know, I think that I think there's people that have two burning passions at the same time. I really do. And I, I wonder if you can wuzzle them and, and make them both work at the same time. That was a 1980s rare television cartoon Saturday morning reference, wuzzle. Do you know what wuzzles are? India, search it right now. Let's watch India's face. She's gonna love these. Watch this. This is India in real time. This is India in Wuzzles. real time. Yeah, Wuzzles. W. Wuzzles. Yep. See it? Uh huh. Go to images because this is Wikipedia. Go to images. Okay. I want you to like really wrap your head around how cool these things are. Cool, right? There are two animals in one. So she was like a oh. hippo and a butterfly. You see what's going on here? I see it. Two I animals see it. in one. Oh, I kind of remember this. Bang! That's what I was looking for. <laughs> Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh-huh. So uh, maybe you can wuzzle them, right? And find a way to make your two passions. For example, you know, I could have very easily made Wine Library TV and the Jet. <laughs> What's going on here? Wuzzle them. Well, wuzzle them. Like take your two passions and smash them into one. Like for example, I could have done all my wine episodes at football games. That would have been a, a further. You know, I had the Jets bucket, um, but you know, there's ways to uniquely. I think. You know, I, I once said, and a lot of you liked this uh, photo on Instagram. Uh, you know, if you or this quote, if you want to be an anomaly, you have to act like one. I wonder, based on this question, if you could be the first person that combines two things that nobody's ever combined before, which are you know weird, and, and win. For example, again. I love wrestling. What if I did Wine Library TV only at tailgates or football environments and wrestling matches, like independent circuits, like weird stuff where there's 150 people in the audience at a gym and the Iron Sheik's still there, you know, like stuff like that. So um, I'm a big fan of trying to find a way to wuzzle them and, uh, and that's what I would do. Now obviously a lot of people are gonna tell you pick one, focus. I may say that at times. Today I felt like wuzzling them. Tomorrow if I answer this question I might say pick one. Both can work. I think at the end of the day, uh, and we've talked a lot about this, it's about self-awareness and you know it's funny. I'm reading every goddamn comment in Facebook specifically. Um, right now I'm on a Facebook comment um, kind of spree so I apologize to all the YouTubers uh, but that's just what's happening. Um, and, and it's interesting, I, you know, I'm feeling more and more pressure on my shoulders more than ever before because the show is picking up so much momentum and I'm watching so many people comment about them implementing and seeing results and it, and it makes me hungry, ambitious, greedy to try to impact more people um, with what is really working which is if you really know yourself, really India, this question comes down to a very simple place which is it's one of two choices. It's truly one of two choices. It's really just two levers. It's happiness and financial um, and street cred upside. It's just trying to pull the lever. And listen, I do this. I think a lot of you may be confused. I leave enormous amounts of money on the table for happiness. I just do. I do it all the time. Um, the largest speaking gig of my career a number that makes me vomit on the table out of happiness. I passed on because it's week four and the Jets are playing in London and I want to go watch the Jets play the Dolphins in London. And, I'm, and by the way, this is a significant number. This is a hefty six-figure deal. This is, this is more money than I made in a three-year period in my mid-twenties to go and MC and speak at an event for a day and a half. Still could have watched the Jets like I do all the time. And I'm choosing happiness over cash. And we all have to do that all the time. And our lives evolve. I'm in a better financial place than I was seven years ago. Maybe then I would have chose cash. I don't know. But, but even in my early days, um, for example, when I lost an eighth, uh, eighth, Jesus Christ, a third of my entire wealth in my 20s to have fun in Vegas <laughs> and lose it all gambling um, was because I chose happiness, kind of sadness, over, over, over wealth. And so, the answer to this question is predicated very simply. Do I believe there's, I'm gonna really, I'm really breaking this down, India. Um, 
if you wuzzle it, you may pop and be an anomaly and have disproportionate success because you're the first guy to ever bring spaghetti and music together in this way. Most likely you won't. And your financial upside is probably predicated on picking one and going all in. Most likely. However, you just might have more happiness mixing the two and have the home run grand slam potential of breaking out, which is why I always do those things. I'm always picking my happiness versus the straight and obvious course because I've got a little bit of magic and sometimes my weird stuff actually works as well and the boo-boo prize is that I'm happier. And boy, happiness is addicting. You know what, I'm gonna actually throw a right hook here right now. Vayner Nation, serious right hook alert. I love wuzzles. Please go to eBay and buy me some stuffed animal wuzzles so I can put them right here on the show. It's a very inexpensive way for you to get a shout out. That's all in black and white. I'm gonna start doing more of that. I love eBay and, and like garage sale culture and I'm gonna, I'm gonna start getting the fans to buy me random shit. <laughs> I mean, the show's free. You might as well pay some sort of dig. <laughs> um. I would love a table full of wuzzles. Yeah, I just want tables full of random crap, collectibles, things that I want. Then I'm gonna flip them back on eBay and make a profit on your ass. What a Funk asks, Yo Gary V, can you rate my Instagram on a one to 10 scale and tell me how to improve? Yeah, let's do it live. I love India, great job, great question. So here we are, What a Funk, who's, who I've seen plenty of times uh, in my stream. So here's his clothing thing. I don't, can you, can you, what can you get here? I'm gonna rate it here. Let's see what's going on. Not a lot of engagement. Can you turn up her brightness? Let's see. Yeah. Another way. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, the pictures are tremendous. Let's play this video. I love it. I love the ghetto-ness. Um, so, 1,500 followers, 10, 15, 20 engagements. The engagements are a hair low. Um, I mean, I really like the photos. I just. Honestly, I don't think you're growth hacking enough. I need you. I think you need a lot more uh, of a fan base. Um, what if I'm hanging in my homie's shop or shop? Yeah, I mean, the con- the content is is fine. I mean, I think I'd rate it a six or seven. Uh, I think it's it's too. I think at this point you're too small, and you need to try a lot of different things. Quote cards, um, zoomed in versions of the clothes. Like, I think you could mix it up a little bit. Um, how often is he posting it yet? While I'm giving the answer, try to give me a general range. Like once a day, maybe like a little more. Yeah, I would go with three times a day to find your cadence and find your thing. I'd rather lose ten to. 20% of my audience to see if I can find the upside. Ooh, that was a really strong, good piece of advice for a lot of people on Instagram. Let me say it again. That was me rewinding. I'd rather lose 10 to 20% of my audience by posting three times a day if I was filling up their feed and make sure you're being strategic about those posts and doing very different things to maybe find pay dirt as a thematic creatively for your upside. I'd also start reaching out at scale. You have products. You're selling hats and shirts and stuff like that. You need to reach out all day long, all day long in the comments, go to Instagram, go to people that have 5,000 to 50,000 followers that are, you know, got your vibe uh, as a user and leave a comment in their latest picture saying, I wanna give you some swag, you know, can we do something? You've gotta get more distribution and awareness and I would do that by giving away product for them to give you shout outs on their stream and siphon, siphon their audience. Cool. Um, there's another. What's that? I see Matt, don't worry. There's another question. Sid the intern's getting a little bit concerned. Just. I saw him say it, but you have to understand, he works for me. <laughs> Not the other way around. But I appreciate it. And more importantly, you should always know that I'm seeing everything. I see him. But I appreciate it. Um, do you want to do the last question and then the last question, or the last question? Whatever you want, Eddie, let's go fast, because Let's Matt's circling around. <laughs> I saw. All right. Jared asks, if you have a business that is growing fast, is it more important to perfect the system and process, or focus on adding more people to the team? Jared, it's a good question. I'm a big fan of both. 
<laughs> I don't understand why not both. I do both. As building VaynerMedia, I was perfecting the system while hiring people and training them up and building out the team. This is not an either or, my man, and this is where I think people struggle. To really be victorious, I think you need to be able to do both at the same time. That's what separates the women from the girls, right? The ability to be able to do both things at the same time. And by the way, that's where hustle comes in. Because you know what, to do both, you've gotta kind of integrate the team nine to five while kind of spending five to like two in the morning to perfect the system. This is where hustle matters. This is where extra hours in a day actually matter because you can't get to both. Actually, like physically, you can't get to both. And so in a nine hour workday. So if you've got a business that's growing fast, the first question is, are you actually deploying 18 hours a day? Because remember, too many of you have missed or are gonna miss your moment in time. When it's happening, when it's happening, if you don't triple pedal down, that's pedal on the metal, like foot on the pedal, like if you don't go all the hell in, all of it, if you don't do that at that moment, you will regret. You have missed your moment in time and that is why I'm burning the candle from both sides right now because everything is hitting a proper crescendo as I'm going into my 40th birthday in November. Vayner Media, Vayner RSC, my fund, cruising, you know, just cruising and the Ask Gary V show, cruising, uh, you know, just I'm, and, and family life and health, I mean, cruising. And so I've got to push harder because you know what? At 42, I, it might just be that break in that moment in time where things aren't cruising as much. And so you've got to extract. You've got to extract all the value when you're hitting that point. Uh, you've got to live it. You know, you just have to live it. As a matter of fact, for all of you that are in your senior year of high school that are watching your show, squeeze the crap out of that because it's the best. And college, like you've got to squeeze everything all the time. Um, and especially, this question really hits a nerve because I want people to understand the answer is both. Gary V, what's up? Lewis Howes here from the School of Greatness podcast. Big fan of the Ask Gary V show. Keep it up, love what you're doing. I've got a two part question for you uh, and it's geared around selling books. Now I've got a big book launch coming out in October, in the fall, it's called The School of Greatness. Very excited about it. And uh, I've got two part question for you. One, with Instagram ads looking like they're gonna be opening up here soon. Somebody's paying attention. If you could only spend money in one place on ads, Facebook or Instagram, where would you be putting your money on a book launch coming out this fall? That's part one. And part two, if you were looking to get 10,000 pre-orders through bulk orders, where would you be focusing your energy and efforts to get 10,000 pre-orders? Piece of cake, because I've done it so many That's times. That's the question, hope you like it. Thanks I for love it, Lewis. Uh, I would, I'm hedging here because I just don't know exactly what Instagram is gonna do. If I knew that Instagram is gonna fully open up the funnel, the fire hose, and ads are just rolling in and we're seeing five, seven ads a day on our feed, then I would say Instagram. I really would because I do believe the attention is sitting in Instagram. The problem is my intuition, without any knowledge, is they're gonna be a little tighter on the spigot and, and it's gonna be a little tougher to actually break through and so I would spend 50 cents on a dollar in Facebook and Instagram. The problem is your book's coming out in October. The ad prompt firm's supposed to come out in October. My belief is it comes out later. So I think I want you mentally in Facebook. Facebook's gonna dominate. Number two is a piece of cake because I've done it multiple times and I'll do it again in March or February for my Ask Gary B book. Um, the place to go is to your homies. The place to go is to your homies. What I mean by that is reverse engineer everything you've done for people for the last 18 months and send them one by one, not in bulk. Biggest mistake people make is send a bulk email and say, this is the one time I want to send a bulk email. You know, I, uh, I just need all of you to buy my book. I get that all the time. That is a piece of crap execution. It will not work. I don't feel like it's personal. I never buy. But Lewis, when you email me and you write a whole thing like, hey, remember when we first met in Ohio and I drove you around to St. Louis and I drove you around and this and that and you know, thanks for being on my podcast and hey, remember a couple months ago you, I asked this question on the show so here's my thing and hey, it was great to see that. Like real stuff, like real stuff, like the party in LA that I have, like real stuff, real stuff that happened between you and I, not a bulk control, Control V. This is you and me. You spent five minutes writing this email. It would really mean a lot to me. I'm going to be guilted into buying a hundred bucks, and that's it. And you've got a lot of people like that. And some people are even more homie with you, and they'll buy a thousand, or they'll buy forty, or they'll buy ninety. And literally, when when Jab to Jab Right Hook came out in that August, it came out in February. In that August, uh, or that came. In, when did it come out? In January. I don't know. When did Jab to Jab Right Hook come out? Anyway, in that August. 
maybe December. Anyway, in that August, I um, emailed thousands of people one by one, wrote them one by one emails. It took forever. Um, and I got a lot of sales and well into the tens of thousands. And so that would, that's exactly what I would do. I'd reverse engineer CRM your whole social graph. The 25 to 7,000 people that most matter and one by one by one, remind them the nice things you've done. And I know how you roll, you build up leverage. One by one by one, one by one by one, one by one by one. Tedious, long, but effort that converts in actual sales. And follow up. I went in right in and be like, look, you need to say no in this email or at the time, Nate, who's the CEO of the book, or Nate is gonna email you and ask you every week on the week, and I'm cool as shit if you go with no, because I get it, cool. But you need to say it, because I will bother you until you tell me. And so, put them in a corner, suffocate them, don't let them be able to like just delete it and not answer, pound them, let them basically understand that you will not have a relationship going forward if you don't at least answer, and that no is equally as awesome as a thousand, and that's what I did. I really made everybody feel very comfortable in saying no, because I get it. Um, as I did with them being a thousand. It's funny, after I did Jab Jab Right Hook, even though I did it for Crush and Thank You Economy, um, after I did it for Jab Jab Right Hook, it's funny, I've been giving this advice to a lot of people, and we've, as you guys know, we've been buying a lot of hundreds and two hundreds and putting them out for Vayner. Um, so that's the scoop, my man, that's what I would do. Guys, thank you for watching the show. Um, I really appreciate it. My question of the day, <laughs> Lewis has got me fired up for my book. How many copies of the Ask Gary Vee book are you going to buy uh, when it comes out in February or March? Very simple question, not super complicated. Please leave your answer. And lurkers, I'm talking to you lurkers. Here's what a lurker is. We talked a lot about it on Wine Library TV. I don't bring it up as much on Ask Gary Vee, but I've been looking at the data. There is a boatload. A boatload of you who've watched this show who have not commented. I need you to come out and at least say hey. Please. You keep asking questions. This was a really good episode. A lot of stuff went on in this episode. Yelled at Sid the intern. I'll keep answering them. Yeah. Yeah. Right.